Welcome. Welcome to the Zarrow Regional Library. My name is Kimberly Johnson. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Tulsa City County Library System. And today we are gathered in our beautiful Zarrow Regional Library, home of TCCL's fantastic American Indian Resource Center. I am so delighted to, um, that you were able to join us for this ceremony this morning, the Circle of Honor ceremony. We celebrate this special event every other year as part of our American Indian Festival of Words, which is presented annually by the Tulsa City County Library System, American Indian Resource Center, and the Tulsa Library Trust. If you have not had the chance to explore the American Indian Resource Center, please make sure after today's program that you do visit it. It's right behind me, behind the fireplace. You'll be glad that you did. So we are very proud of our American Indian Resource Center as it is nationally recognized for its programs to preserve and promote uh, appreciation for the state's American Indian heritage. We are also very proud of the center's coordinator, Teresa Reynolds. She was just over there, but she's moving around. There she is. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Through Teresa's hard work at the center, she has contributed greatly to the Tulsa area Indian community and helped tremendously in the preservation of native languages. So today's ceremony is an example of the programming that has led us to have national recognition. So we thank Teresa for that. Thank you again, Teresa. At this time, I would like to um, well recognize our, hold on one second. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the sponsors who helped make the Circle of Honor ceremony possible through their generosity. And you have a listing on the back of your program. I'm just gonna read it. Um, uh, they are the Maxine and Jack Zarrow Family Foundation, the Frank and Mary Shaw, uh, Greater Tulsa Indian, Greater Tulsa Area Indian Affairs Commission, Tulsa Indian Community Foundation, the Tulsa Library Trust, the Tulsa City County Library's American Indian Resource Center, Union Public Schools, uh, Native American Education Program, and El Chico. Additionally, support was provided by the Mary Kay Chapman Foundation and the George Kaiser Family Foundation. And at this time, I would like to welcome uh, these special guests that are in our audience today. And they are uh, Ruthie uh, Blaylock Jones, 2014 Circle of Honor recipient. Where's Ruthie? Is she here? Oh, in the, in the back there. Alden Mann. Al <laughs> there's Alden Mann, <laughs> Dr. Mann's uh, son. Alice White Cloud, representing the Greater Tulsa Area Indian Affairs Commission. <laughs> Kara Cowan Watts, former Cherokee Nation Tribal Council. <laughs> Aragon Star, writer and um, su super Indian cr creator. Okay. <laughs> we have Archie Mann, Osage Nation Congress. Archie Mann in the back. Um, we also have Abby Runnels, Creek Elementary Student of the Year. Where did she go? And then we have Alabama, please help me with the last name, um, Tribal Town Chief Nelson Harjo. Quisette. Kashart, Kashardi, thank you, thank you. <laughs> the Tulsa City County Library strongly believes that libraries change lives. In fact, one of the ways we do this is by recognizing and sharing the culture and history of American Indians. I wanna thank you all again for being here today, for supporting our libraries, for supporting Dr. Mann, and supporting our state's rich Indian culture. Now please join me in welcoming our Master of Cer Ceremonies, Mr. Mark Wilson, American Indian Resource Center Advisory Member. Welcome, Mark.
Thank you, Kim. Let's give Ms. Johnson, the CEO of the Tulsa City County Library, a big round of applause without her <laughs> leadership and guidance and vision um, today would not be possible as, as well as without the um, assistance and, and vision of, of Teresa as well. But uh, thank you, Kim, for being here. We know uh, we had a chance to, to share a, a, a private moment of, uh, and a few words uh, just a few minutes ago after breakfast. And, you know, being the CEO of, of, a, of a major library in a major city, it, it says a lot. It means a lot. And the, uh, the fact that you're here helping us celebrate our culture and, and honoring one of our own says a lot. And uh, we all know the demands on your schedule. It takes away from your family and, and, and your children and your grandchildren. So uh, you being here with us today means, uh, as Indian people, means the world to us. So let's give Ms. Johnson one more round of applause. Thank you, Kimberly. <laughs> Welcome to uh, the opening of our American Indian Festival of Words. Welcome to the Zero Regional Library. This is a, 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 a jewel of a library. And we, we owe a lot to the Zero family uh, to, um, uh, for, this, for this library. And, and the city of Tulsa owes a tremendous debt of gratitude to the Zero family because their, their generosity from their heart uh, has helped our city grow uh, uh, so much. And, and the family, we thank them uh, uh, from the bottom of our heart for opening up their, their, their hearts to different uh, endeavors, to different um, uh, projects like the library uh, across the city. They're, they're, they're the zero name you will see uh, at, on different uh, different facilities. And I know that uh, the library, we're just so pleased that the, the American Indian Resource Center is housed here. And uh, we're just uh, honored and uh, we celebrate each and every one of you for being here with us today, uh, and we look forward to celebrating uh, a, a one of our own uh, throughout this morning. And we are going to kick off with a special performance by Miss Barbara McAllister, Cherokee. She began her operatic career as an apprentice with the Santa Fe Opera Company and Central City Opera Company. And after the Santa Fe and Central City, she went on to perform with the Washington Opera Company, Turkey Heritage Center, Arizona Opera, San Diego Opera, Tulsa Opera, Florentine Opera, New York Grand Opera, Opera New England, and she has performed as a member of the Metropolitan Opera, as well as with the opera companies throughout the world. She has graced the stages of the Lincoln Center, Carnegie Hall, and the Kennedy Center, and performed for the Oklahoma State, Art, Oklahoma State Arts Council Touring Group, Touring Program, Singing Opera, Arias, and Native American Songs in the Cherokee language. She was honored for her professional achievements with the Cherokee Medal of Honor and inducted into the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame. Today, Barbara will be singing the Lord's Prayer. Signing the prayer will be AIRC advisory member, Mr. Will Hill, who is Muskogee Creek. Also, AIRC supporter, Harriet Hinman, who is Chimawea and Wallapai, will be assisting. She was born on the Colorado River Reservation. Please join me in welcoming Barbara McAllister. Thy name. 
forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I didn't know if you uh, would like to sing uh, Amazing Grace. Uh, I can do one verse in Cherokee in whatever uh, native language. You all sing the first verse if you would join in with that language. And then everyone sing the first verse of Amazing Grace in English. How would that be? But I want to be able to hear you, okay? <laughs> so sing out, use your diction of whatever language. So. Uh, mm. Oh, Everyone will know this verse, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Uh, thank you very much. Wado. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Barbara, let's give Barbara another round of applause. I love, absolutely love to hear Amazing Grace. One of my uh, all-time favorites uh, as well as yours, Barbara, and probably so many of us in, in this uh, room. And the, and the various renditions, uh, that, that song is truly universal. Uh, Barbara, thank you so much for being here. Uh, you, you, uh, you blessed us with, with your beautiful voice. And um, God bless. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we're here this morning to, uh, you know, the circle of honor is a, is, a, is a wonderful, not only an award, but a, a recognition where we are, able to recognize one of our very own. And the, the past winners are tremendous, and we're, we're so honored, uh, Ruthie, to have you in our presence uh, this morning as a past recipient. Um, Charles, uh, the late Charles Chibitty, the late uh, Wilma Mankiller, uh, and the list goes on and on of, of, of previous honorees in I'm so happy that um, uh, Dr. Mann is the recipient uh, of this year's Circle of Honor. And I've, I've known Dr. Mann for, for many, many, many years. 
as well as many of you uh, in the room today. And uh, she's been an inspiration to uh, our young people, uh, those of us that uh, have been in higher education. And uh, I know, Kara, it's good to see you here today. And I know that, that, that Dr. Mann is, was, was one of your mentors. And I, was, I shared with Dr. Mann and her family, I, I, I drove and, and met them at the, at the Doubletree and was able to, to spend a few minutes with, with the family. And, and Dr. Mann and I were, were visiting and uh, we were talking about the, our, our past circles with the National Indian Education Association and with College Board and uh, we're talking about our, our former colleagues uh, at, at, at the University of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State University and, and uh, the, the influence that she's had on uh, the younger generation that we, we, we have seen uh, when they were in high school and then they went to undergraduate uh, studies at their respective institutions. And because of individuals like Dr. Mann, they chose to pursue uh, higher ed careers past their bachelor uh, uh, degrees and on into master programs, master degree programs, and on past that into PhD programs. And they needed someone to look up to. They needed uh, a, a role model like a Kim Johnson. And for our American Indian community, um, it's small. You know, we have a room full of our people here today, but when you get on a, on a major college research institution, that, that, that room shrinks. And you don't have individuals like a doctor man. And so the, the influence, the power, doctor man, that you've had on our younger generation, it's, it's, it's a gift. It's a gift from God. It truly is a gift from God. So we are here this morning to um, honor you and honor your family, your children, and your grandchildren, honor your tribe, honor your community, and in doing so, you honor us. And you honor this library, you honor the, the Tulsa City County Library family, and um, you honor our American Indian uh, community here in, in the greater Tulsa area. And we couldn't be more pleased to have you on such a beautiful day. You know, the, our, our Creator blessed us with, with uh, sunshine this morning and blessed us with uh, the, the, the birds and the animals talking to us this morning. We woke up and it's like they, they greeted us this morning because we have a special visitor in our hometown, and it's you, Henrietta. It's you. I just have a few, and I could go on and on. I just I have a few um, um, notes here from the office of the governor, from the Chickasaw Nation, the great Chickasaw Nation, from the Honorable Bill Anatubby, your friend, governor of the great Chickasaw Nation. Dr. Mann, congratulations on being honored at the American Indian Festival of Words as the 2018 Circle of Honor inductee by the Tulsa Library Trust. You are truly deserving of this prestigious achievement and an inspiration to all in Indian country. You have impacted many through your unparalleled life of service and teaching. We thank you for all you have done for Indian country. He, can't, he couldn't be here today because of a conflict in his schedule. But he, uh, uh, he, just is, he joins in the celebration from afar. And he's, he stated he's proud of your many accomplishments throughout your career and sends you the best wishes on a wonderful induction ceremony, again, from the Honorable Bill Anatubby, uh, Anatubby Governor of the Chickasaw Nation. Let's give Dr. Uh, uh, Governor Anatubby a round of applause. And again, just a little bit about uh, our honoree, Dr. Mann. She's Cheyenne, retired founding president of the Cheyenne and Arapaho Tribal College. In 2000, she became the first individual to occupy the Cats Endowed Chair in Native American Studies at Montana State University in Bozeman, where she is Professor Emerita and was the special assistant to the president until 2016. In 1991, Rolling Stone Magazine named Dr. Mann as one of the 10 leading professors in the nation. 
In 2008, she received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Indian Education Association. The College Board, Native American Student Advocacy Institute, presented her with its first Lifetime Achievement Award in 2013 and has since created the Dr. Henrietta Mann Leadership Award to acknowledge and thank leaders for their advocacy in improving lives within Native communities. In 2014, Money Magazine named her a Money Hero Award winner, one of 50 unsung heroes, 50 states, conferred for her extraordinary work with the Cheyenne and Arapaho Tribal College in improving the financial well-being of others. In 2016, Dr. Mann was one of two Native Americans ever to be elected to the National Academy of Education. Indian Country Today has included her, <clears throat> excuse me, in its 2016 50 Faces of Indian Country. Dr. Mann lives in Weatherford, Oklahoma, and continues to serve on boards for her tribes, for the state of Oklahoma, and for her country at the national and international levels. This award was inaugurated in 2004. Four, the Circle of Honor Ceremony honors an American Indian for their achievements and contributions that have enriched the lives of others. Induction into this circle is a celebration of the honoree's actions in the face of adversity, commitment to the preservation of American Indian culture and legacy for future generations. An individual is inducted into the Circle of Honor in even number years. The recipient receives a cash prize, which is sponsored by the Maxine and Jack Zero Family Foundation. Bless you. Previous winners include Mr. Charles Chibitty, Wilma Mankiller, Neil McCaleb, Billy Mills, Kirk Kickingbird, Ruthie Blaylock Jones, and Sam Proctor. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give our honorees and even our past honorees a big round of applause at this time. I'd like to ask um, Ms. Kim Johnson, Mr. Archie Mason, and Jerry McKellen, walk up to please come join me on stage. Dr. Mann, will you please rise, please, at this time? And ladies and gentlemen, let's give our honoree of 2018 a big round of applause. Stay 
and now you expect me to speak? <laughs> I've never been afraid to speak. I, I've spoken quite a few places in my lifetime. And I've never been at a loss of words. But my heart is very full today. You have filled it up. In fact, it's overflowing. And in the most beautiful of our languages, I can say, now Shimana. Thank you. Thank you to all of you here, and thank you to all of you that made this possible. I have walked long on this earth. But there has never been a day like this. For never have I received such an honor from my own. From the people to whom I belong, because I belong to you. There are things due to, to many people, to the same people that, that uh, Miss Johnson mentioned, to the advisory committee, all of the members, all of the sponsors, To my scout, I had a scout this morning <laughs> who came to the hotel and guided us. I thought, my goodness, what kind of a Cheyenne have I become? <laughs> Can't even get across Tulsa. <laughs> when my ancestors had to get from wherever what? Montana to Oklahoma, through, through Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, and without a map. You know, they didn't have Google either. <laughs> but we got here, and I was so anxious to see all of you, and some I didn't expect to see. And you're all here to make this day so special, thankfulness. And I got here, and there was, there was Teresa Runnels waiting to feed me again. <laughs> I, I arrived here Thursday, and she says, you get here at 3.30. We're going to eat. And I thought, my. She took me literally because I said, my doctor says I have to eat no later than 5 o'clock each day. You know, when you get older, you begin to work on a different time, time uh, clock. And so... We went to eat at a place called uh, Stepping Stone. They're an Indian restaurant. Oh my goodness, we Indians know how to cook. <laughs> I had the best cheeseburger I've had in my entire 83 years of life with fried onion rings. I mean, if my cardiologist had <laughs> known what I was eating the other night, he would have said, he wouldn't have worried about the 20 pounds I've lost in the past year. <laughs> and so, and we, I've been eating since. And when Teresa greeted me this morning, she said, I'm going to feed you one more time. And we ate again. You know, that's how we are as, as the first people of this land. You know, we make sure that that we take care of one another, that, that, you know, that we're hospitable, that we greet one another, that we make sure that we know that we respect each other, that we're kind, that we honor each other. This is surely the greatest honor of my life. And, and I want to thank you for being here, for, for giving me this honor. Just like you, uh, I'm just, I'm just another person. I'm just a 
just another person. That was what my grandfather taught me. I never knew my grandmothers, never had a grandmother, but I had a grandfather. And my grandfather was my, my best friend, and he taught me so much. And his name was Spotted Horse, Spotted Horse Fred Man, Cheyenne from Hammond, Oklahoma. That was where I grew up. I was born in, in the Clinton Indian Health Hospital uh, nearly 84 years ago. The hospital was new then. And uh, I had a great grandmother. Her name was Hamai Wasta, or Wasta, white buffalo woman. She was must have been a phenomenal woman. She was a midwife. She was a doctor of horses, and we as Cheyennes, Arapahoes, you know, as Plains Indians, as as American Indians, you know, we relied upon our horses. And as Cheyennes and Arapahoes, we said that we would get that animal sometimes, as told by our, our prophet Sweet Medicine, upon whose back we would get, and that animal would carry us into the blue vision. And, and we got that animal, that horse. And my great-grandmother, white buffalo woman, was a doctor of that animal. And we got on that animal. It carried us here to the southern plains where we put down our roots. And she was among the last of those horse culture people. And she was among the last of the buffalo people and made that final break with those people to put down her roots here in this place that we now know is the home of the red people. This is where I was born. This is where I came to make my home with all of you. I was born in the Depression days. I'm a depression baby. I didn't go west until many years later. I left this place after I, um, I, I got my education. I worked real hard. And like many of you, I have a love of learning, just like our grandparents did. Because, you know, we, we really built our education systems here way before it education ever came to, or the form of education was ever brought to this land. There's a quotation of mine that is often used in other people's writing. I remember um, Dr. Uh, Richard Little Bear from Dullknife College in Northern Cheyenne quoted me one, di one time in his paper, and I thought, oh my gosh, I've reached that point where I'm being quoted. And he, he said, like Dr. Henrietta Mann said, and I thought I finally reached something. I don't know what it was, but he said, she said that education did not come to this country on the Nina or the Pinta or the Santa Maria. You know, and it didn't, because we instituted our own educational systems. We created the first schools. We were its first teachers. We were its first students. We had the first colleges. We had the first schools. We really created the first libraries. Our libraries had talking books. And I read somewhere the other day that there are some libraries where you go out and you can check out people to tell your stories. Isn't that phenomenal? That was what we were doing the whole time. They're finally <laughs> catching up with us. So, you know, I guess Teresa Ronalds is just gonna be doing that the next time I come around here. In fact, I'll be sitting in her library over here in the corner and I'm gonna expect uh, uh, my, my uh, my, my little niece here, Susan Arkakita's granddaughter, to come and check me out <laughs> so I can tell her, her granddaughter, my story. I mean, we are so far ahead of everybody else when it comes to philosophy, educational uh, modules, environmental philosophy, I mean, anything. We really are uh, highly technologically 
philosophically advanced people. And that is all I have ever capitalized upon. I taught Native American studies my entire career in higher education. I went to the University of California, Berkeley, after, even though I was a depression baby, I didn't go west until 1970. And I began my higher education career teaching at the University of California, Berkeley, in the days of the Black Panther movement, Angela Davis movement. They were hollering black power, I was hollering red power. <laughs> Our, our, our people were out on Alcatraz. They were out on the rock. And I mean to say, well, okay, you know, we weren't going to get left behind. I wasn't about to let us as this land's first people get left out of the mix. You know, we're sometimes, I mean, we're, we're taught to be respectful and kind and so forth, but I wasn't going to let us remain the forgotten Americans. Uh-uh. <laughs> So I stayed at Berkeley, and I be, I, I was, that was my first university teaching job. I left there to go to the University of Montana, taught there for 28 years, finally went back home. The late John Woodenlegs welcomed me to the first Montana Indian Education Conference and said, come on, this, I, I welcome her back home. It took her long enough to get back here. We walked back in 1898. She came back in a car. And, and so I, I made my career in higher education. And finally, after having taught at the University of Montana in Missoula for 28 years, I left and went to Montana State University in the year 2000 to fill an endowed chair and Native American studies, the first of its kind in, in, in the Pacific Northwest, and maybe about one of a handful in the whole United States of America. And I retired from the Montana University system in 2003, a retired university professor. And uh, I just, uh, you know, I, I have loved what I did as a university professor because I got to teach about us. Nobody else taught about us. And I taught about us, I then thought, with all of our beauty, but with all of our tragedy, all that we have endured as a people, all that uh, the unfortunate and tragic way that we have been treated as this land's first people. But with all of the beauty, all that we have contributed to the history of this country. And so I could get named as one of Rolling Stone's 10 top professors in the country. And so one of my colleagues across campus at the University of Montana wrote me a little note and he says, when I got listed in Rolling Stone, said, for us holdover hippies from the 60s, this is equivalent <laughs> to our Nobel laureate, isn't it? <laughs> and so, yes, it was. And so I retired, a, a university professor. I climbed the academic ranks. I had to be the best that I could possibly be. I went up through the academic ranks the way that my colleagues, the Anglo professors were, because, you know, we can do it. We can become what anybody else can become, and I was not going to let you down either. I did what was expected of me, and I really had to work hard. I had to work hard to be 100% for being a woman, and I had to work another 100% for being an American Indian. Yeah, but I have always been proud of who, who we are. And so, so I have worked hard. My life has been one of service because that's who we are as American Indians. We live a life of service, we give. But my life has also been very fulfilling because I have not only told our story, but I have told the story to our children. My life has been about serving your children, your grandchildren, our children as the first children of this land. 
that has what has made my life so exciting, but that has been what has given me purpose, and that has been my entire purpose in life. And that is why, even after I retired, that I came home to assist the Cheyenne Arapaho people in establishing their own tribal college. But you know, sometimes politics or a lack of money can get in the way. And I'm sad that, that our tribal college is no longer there, but we graduated. We graduated about four or five dozen children with associate's degree from our tribe. And so, you know, dreams. Some dreams live forever, and sometimes some dreams can be very short. But there's always an impact that we leave. And so that the short time or the long time that I have been here, I have done it for you, and because I'm one of you. And I've done it for your children, and I have done it for your grandchildren. And I hope that I have performed a service and done something that will make the lives of our grandchildren and their children after them much easier and much better. And it has been my love for you and for them that has given my life the purpose that it has. And I want to thank you for being here today to help me to celebrate and know that I really, really love you and thank you very much. <laughs>